Dawn of the 2nd of February 2023 at AZ University campus residence in Pretoria, South Africa. Friends of a student at the university were concerned when they unsuccessfully tried to reach her on her phone and went on to knock at her room door. They knocked and knocked but got no answer. They tried turning the door handle and were shocked to see blood on the handle. They frantically called out to her and went to the security to open the door for them, only to be met with a harrowing scene in front of them. This is the story of Ndogozo Mayenzi Kap. Dogozo Mayenzi Kaba, who was 20 years old at the time, was born and raised in Newcastle of KwaZulu Natal in South Africa. She grew up with a loving family surrounding her. Born on the 12th of February 2002, she had her siblings and everyone she loved around her. Her cousin, who asked to remain anonymous, said they grew up together since Ndogozo was about six months old until they got older and matriculated from high school. That's when she decided to go to Bumaranga and Dogozo decided to go to Pretoria to study in the Tony University of Technology, where she would major in integrated communication. Dogozo was described by her loved ones as someone who was very educated and cared deeply about the people she loved. She was a beautiful, ambitious, and highly smart young woman who had the biggest heart. Someone who did not deserve what fate would later send her way. With a PhD in her mind and a goal set to be achieved, Dogozo was well on her way to success. She was on her third year in her integrated communication studies and was about to graduate and welcome her degree in a few months preceding the dark events that took place. With her home miles and miles away, Dogozo found a residence at the university's Ekaya Junction residence in Pretoria. The place was not far from the Tony University of Technology where she studied. Dogozo was enjoying her time in school not only in her student lifestyle but also in her private life. She made time to enjoy herself fully but while all this was going on, Dogozo had no idea that someone was looking closely at her and the unwanted attention from said person would soon turn deadly. On the 1st of February 2022, the day was ordinary in the student residential building and there was nothing unusual about the atmosphere around the building. It was a new year and with a month in from the festive holidays, the celebratory vibe was still ripe in the air so Ndogozo and a few friends decided to have one last fun night before they would immerse themselves in books and studies. Ndogozo invited her ex-boyfriend Nebo alongside her friends and together that they organized alcohol and snacks, put on some music, and the fun started. The day went on as the group were enjoying themselves, and before everyone knew it, the sun had set and it was night time. Later on in the night, just before midnight, Nyebo, Ndogozo's ex-boyfriend, asked to speak to Ndogozo alone in an attempt to ask for her to take him back. Ndogozo's friends were reluctant to leave the two alone because apparently Nebo was abusive and Ndogozo was weary when he always came around to the campus residence. Now this to me is odd and confusing because why would Ndogozo invite her ex-boyfriend whom she feared to have fun together with? Let me elaborate further about the situation. Ndogozo Ngwebo, who was 23 years old and too was from KZN, dated a year prior. Their relationship lasted for about two years and it is known that before they broke up, Ngwebo turned abusive. Towards the end of the relationship, Ngwebo was abusive. It got so bad that she had to report him to the local police. At first, Ndogozo didn't want her family to know about the abuse, but her friends witnessed some of it. 
Nebo was a Blue Bulls rugby player at its funny University of Technology, so you can imagine how big and strong he was. Dogoso had reason to be scared, so therefore, she was reluctant to open up about the abuse and was apparently hesitant due to Nebo's possessive nature. Furthermore, when she went to report him to the police, they refused to help her. They didn't take her seriously. It got to the point where she was being stopped by the guy, and again, the police couldn't help her, so she tried running away from him. Every time Neville came to the res residential building, she would go stay with a friend. That's one of the reasons her friends were reluctant to leave the two alone that night. That's what doesn't make sense, that after all the guy put her through, she would want to have fun with him. What makes sense, however, is that she didn't invite him, but someone else did, or he invited himself. So that night, he asked to speak to her alone, and heartbreakingly, Dogoso told her friends she was okay and would be okay, so it was okay to leave them alone, unknowingly to her. It would be the biggest mistake ever. The friends went out and the door closed behind them. This would be the last time they see their beautiful friend alive. Neville exited Dorosa's room in the early hours of the 2nd of February, 2023. At dawn, Dorosa's friends tried calling her but got no response. They tried several more times but still got no response, so they decided to go knock at her door. They knocked and knocked. When they were met with silence, they knew something was wrong. It's when they looked at the door handle and saw blood that they feared the worst. They got the campus residence security to open the door and were horrified by what they saw. Dogoso was in bed, tucked in with red surrounding her sheets and her face. Dogoso had been stabbed multiple times and her sheets were covered in her blood. The police were immediately called and Dogoza was declared deceased. The police talked to her friends and campus security. Her friends told the police the events that took place the previous night and Nebo Tusi was confirmed to be the last person to see her alive. The police went in search of Nebo. They captured him in, the place of, in his place of employment. Nebo was taken in and was arrested for the murder of Dogozo Mayenzi Ava. Dawazo's family was inconsolable. They couldn't believe what happened to their beautiful, intelligent, and bubbling Dawazo. She had a vision for her life and set out to realize that dream, only for her light, which shone so brightly it glowed, was dimmed and then eventually switched off. She just wanted to be great. She wanted to have a nice life for herself, said Dawazo's family. What I'll miss about her is her honesty, love, and care. She cared about others. She would put others before her. She loved her siblings, Dogoso's cousin said. Dogoso's father was traumatized about what happened to his daughter, that he couldn't talk. The whole family was just very devastated. <laughs> service and a night vigil was held on Dogozo at the TUT campus. Emotions ran high at the service, which was attended by students dressed in black t-shirts with Dogozo's face printed on them. It was very emotional. TUT's vice chancellor Professor Tinyuko Malileke announced a week of mourning from Dogozo saying the TAT flag will fly until the end of the week. He continued to say Dogozo was not murdered somewhere in the bushes or out in the street. She was murdered in the safest place she could be, her only home away from home, 
her room at Ikaya Junction residence. Not even the protection orders which some women keep in their handbags have protected them from being killed. The Blue Bulls released a statement saying, While we do not know all the details pertaining to the incident, we wish to reiterate that we continue to stand in one voice, condemning all forms of gender-based violence in the strongest of terms. President of the Blue Bulls Rugby Union, William Strauss, sent condolences to Douglas's family. 23-year-old Neville Tusi made his first appearance in the Pretoria Magistrates Court on the 13th of February 2023. The magistrate allowed dozens of students from TUT access into the courtroom, with arms folded, moving his head from side to side, looking arrogant and defensive. He abandoned bail after students said if he would be released on bail, they would stone him to death. The case was postponed for further investigations. It's still an ongoing case. Ndokozo was a beacon of light for her family. A light that was stolen much too soon. May her beautiful, pure soul fly high and rest peacefully.